Hello everyone, my name is Tom, and welcome to this quick chat where we talk about a specific topic in animation. Shira and the Princesses of Power Season 4 has been confirmed to return on November 5th, and this season is going to be a bit different from what we've seen so far. The status quo has drastically changed, as Catra will be stepping up into an even more prominent role within the Horde, and Glimmer will be taking Angela's place as Queen of Brightmoon, which is something that reflects an aspect of Shira's world that I noticed in in the past, and now is the best time to take a deeper look into it. The story that is being told in Shira is about Adora. It's about her experiences in changing allegiance, taking on this mantle that she needs to learn how to carry, and navigating how that affects the relationships in her life. However, the greater conflict of the Rebellion versus the Horde is a story that Adora doesn't have a leading role in. She's not the leader of the Rebellion, she is their secret weapon, their trump card. Her role is important, and she's a massive difference maker but in more ways than so, she is not the most prominent figure in the Rebellion. That figure is Glimmer. It's always been Glimmer, even when Angela was queen. Glimmer was the one with the passion and the stubbornness to make the Rebellion a cohesive force. She was the reason that the Princess Alliance was reunited. She was the one always trying to be active in fighting the Horde and leading that resistance. And now as queen, the fact that she is the head of the Rebellion has never been less disputed. And a similar case can be made for Catra. Even though Catra didn't always have the influence or respect in the Horde that she wanted, she was the driving force in transforming the Horde into what it is now. And most of the achievements that the Horde has achieved throughout the series are to Catra's credit. So as we step into the future, we see on each side Glimmer and Catra stepping up to the front line and acting at the head of each respective side of the conflict. Meaning that even though we will probably still see the story from Adora's perspective, the key events that take place will be featuring more of Glimmer. Which actually makes perfect sense, because despite the amount of focus on Catra's relationship with Adora, her foil is actually Glimmer. Glimmer and Catra are two very similar characters with a lot of the same insecurities, fears, passions, and the same desire to prove themselves. The difference being is while Catra has grown up in an environment where she has learned so many unhealthy ways of coping with and dealing with her issues, Glimmer has had the fortune of being surrounded by a much more supportive and positive environment to better handle her demons. For example, Catra's breaking point for the entire show has been the moment where Adora left her. Adora moved on for people who she had just met to leave Catra behind, and that destroyed Catra. As a result, Catra went down the path of becoming more and more destructive and toxic, seeking to ruin Adora's life and make her hurt as badly as she hurt her. And she didn't just do this to Adora, either. Catra's inability to deal with her trauma has been taken out on Scorpia, and Trapta, Hordak, and nearly everyone who Catra comes in contact with. Meanwhile, Glimmer had a really similar moment at Princess Prom that can really be used to take a look into Catra's perspective, where Glimmer mentions that she's never had many friends. It's always been her and Bo. Kinda like it was always Catra and Adora. So now that Bo is branching out to other people, going to promise Perfuma's date instead of Glimmer's plus one, and being overall more outgoing and social, Glimmer has an insecurity that Bo is going to decide that he likes his new friends better than her, and she'll be left behind with nobody. Which is exactly what Catra feels happened with Adora. Trust me, Bo isn't the type to just leave all of his old friends behind, and neither am... And we see this commonality again in the episode Ties to Bind. During this episode, Catra is captured by Bo and Glimmer, and she drives them up the wall, making the experience as miserable as possible for them. And Glimmer, frustrated, tells Catra that she doesn't understand how Adora put up with her, and that Adora probably didn't run away from the Horde, Adora was probably running from her. And of course, this strikes a nerve of Catra, and the fact that Catra is the type of person who takes out her own issues on others, she taps into the common insecurity between her and Glimmer to say that's only a matter of time before Adora leaves her as well. And this might be a seed that's tapped into in Season 4, since at the New York Comic Con panel, it was mentioned that Adora and Glimmer are going to butt heads a lot this season. So maybe as part of that, we'll end up seeing Glimmer having this fear that Adora, who she has allowed into her inner circle and opened up to, is going to repeat herself and leave her best friends again, which is something that we know that Glimmer is insecure about. But the difference in these situations is while Adora repeatedly told Catra that she doesn't have to stay with the Horde, and that she 
wants her to run away of her so they can be lesbian rebels together, Katra just didn't want that. And she took the fact that her and Adora wanted different things out on Adora. But when Glimmer came to both her insecurities and he gave her a tough love talk about how she's his best friend but it's not okay to take out her fear of being alone on him, she doesn't lash out at him and try to make him feel worse for the facts that he stood up for himself because that communication is part of any healthy relationship. Glimmer accepted that she crossed the line and was in the wrong because she didn't properly communicate how she felt before lashing out at her friend, which is a situation that Katra would easily find herself in, but not a response that she would ever have. A big reason why I'm really not on the Katra Dora is definitely going to happen train anymore is because the farther we get into the show, the more I see some of the toxic people I've had the misfortune of knowing in Katra. Katra is not the type of person who you can communicate a problem to. She's not the type of person who is capable of being held accountable because she has convinced herself that she has been personally victimized by every situation and uses that as justification for her negative behaviors. And it's no longer a case of Katra just needs warmth and care and she'll learn to be a better person. Katra is absolutely obsessed with power and now she doesn't care about the relationships in her life. She cares about coming out on top. So if that means that she has to mistreat and hurt people to maintain her sense of power and control, it's not something she's going to think twice about. And Dora is a character I really care about, so I don't want to see Adora in a situation like that. I want to see her grow and thrive, not be torn down or feel obligated to give herself to someone who has been actively trying to hurt her for so long. And that's why season 3 ending was so cathartic, because we saw Adora finally take her stand against Katra and say enough is enough. That was a paradigm shift in the relationship between Katra and Adora that I think will serve as a momentary conclusion. We will of course come back to that relationship eventually, but for now I think that season 4 is going to focus more on the people around that relationship, like Glimmer, like Scorpia, and give them the opportunity to be more prominent than they have been before. And for Glimmer specifically, I think we're going to start to acknowledge how big of a role she actually plays in everything, as well as comparing and contrasting her character to Katra's, and maybe even exploring some parallels in their relationship with Adora. Because Adora feels a responsibility to honor Angela's request that Adora take care of Glimmer in her absence, which is happening as Glimmer is stepping up and wants people to start treating her with more respect and less like a child, which is primarily what's going to make her and Adora butt heads. And maybe we're going to see Adora have to confront the fact once again that sometimes the people she wants to help most don't want or maybe don't even need her help. Because Adora is going to still be dealing with the fallout of her relationship with Katra, and she may start to question how good of a friend she actually is if she can't help the people she loves the way that she feels she needs to. Because in her role as Shira, it's possible that she intrinsically feels a responsibility to be that influence in everyone's lives. And when she can't help people, that might be a crisis for her that she has to confront and realize that it's okay. She doesn't need to save everyone, or maybe she'll take that lesson from her past experience with Katra and realize it applies here in a much less devastating way. So that way, Adora will be willing to let Glimmer step out on her own and be the leader that the Rebellion needs and be the queen that she needs to be and go head to head with Katra, which will serve to explore the fact that Katra and Glimmer are, in fact, two sides of the same coin. Then we'll probably see Glimmer remember how important Shira is to Rebellion's success, and then we'll go into Season 5 back onto prominently featuring Adora. But for right now, this is Glimmer's moment. It's a formative point in her development as a character, and I honestly appreciate the fact that the story is willing to say, you know what, this supporting character has more going on that's relevant to the main story than the main character right now, so let's give them some more focus for now. Seriously, Glimmer is looking like a queen, Katra's looking like a badass, they're coming into their own, and these are two forces that I want to see clash. Especially since there's been so much foreshadowing, and so many little parallels between these two characters that tie them together. Mostly, I'm just really excited to see Glimmer get more focus and have an opportunity to really shine, because Glimmer is a really underappreciated character. She's really out here being politically active, having some of the most creative offense of any character, like every action scene with her is so well directed, and she's unapologetically about her cause and doesn't care what she has to do to make things happen, and she always sees things through. Like, put some respect on Glimmer, the glow up is well deserved. But what do you guys think? Are you excited to see new characters in the spotlight in Season 4 of Shira and the Princesses of Power? Share your thoughts in the comments below, find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at RoundtableVids, or me on Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram at TommyPQM. And if you want to see more of me, make sure you check out Let's Talk of Tom, or watch my latest Runaway Club examining the relationship between video games and cartoons. Of course, if you enjoyed this video give it a like and share it with your friends if you haven't already please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications to never miss a video to go above and beyond click the join button down below to become a channel member or you can pledge
pledge to us on Patreon. Link in the description. As always, my name is Tom. I hope you have an awesome day, and I will see you next time. See ya.